It's the new normal with consumer electronics. You buy what's supposed to be the best of the best, and the next year there's already something better. Even if we don't like it, we expect it. What we don't expect is to buy a smartphone and have it superseded by a superior one just two months later. That's the situation with the Galaxy S5 LTE A, which we've taken to calling the Galaxy S5 Prime. Visually, it's almost identical to the phone we reviewed in April, but inside, it packs enhancements many expected of that predecessor. So just how T.O.'d should you feel if you bought a Galaxy S5 before this sucker came out? I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Let's find out. Well, to start with, don't get too angry if you live in the United States, as this phone isn't destined for American shores. To get one, you'll have to do what we did, visit a retailer like 28 Mobile. They provided the demo device for this comparison, and if you want a Galaxy S5 LTE A of your own, pay them a visit at the link in the description below. If you were expecting something like the rumored Galaxy F with a metal back or chassis, well, keep waiting. From width to height to depth to mass, these phones almost couldn't be more similar. Aside from some new color choices and a slightly more pronounced dot matrix on the faceplate, the LTE A variant is physically identical to the Galaxy S5. Despite the notable spec differences we'll cover in a second, day-to-day -day performance is also very similar. We're long past the era of app launch times being meaningful measures of performance, and while the LTE A does have a slight edge over the stock S5 after a fresh boot, in normal use, that difference isn't much more than fractions of a second. Performance within those apps is also comparable, which is to say it's usually excellent. These are flagship smartphones, remember, and despite the architecture difference between their processors, each is plenty capable of smooth handling, even when running two apps side by side. The 16 megapixel camera on the new device is the same one you'll find on the, well, the other new device. And the software is essentially identical too, with the same shooting modes and the dizzying dashboard of toggles. The only differences we've found are small. The LTE A version lets you customize which modes are displayed, and also offers an intermediate video resolution between 1080p and Ultra HD. It also doesn't let you turn off the camera shutter sound, as you can on the AT&T version. Quality of the pictures is, as you might expect, right on par. Sometimes our stock S5 produces better contrast and higher saturation than the Prime, but other times that's reversed. Shooting is faster on the Prime, though, especially with stabilized photos. In low light, sometimes the Prime comes out on top, and other times it's bested by its predecessor. But in each case, results aren't the best. Trading eyeballs for ears, we're still neck and neck. Whether it's being used to blast songs from long-dissolved bands, or just to catch up with friends on the phone, the Galaxy S5 speakerphone is loud enough, if inconveniently located around back. That goes for both of these devices, which are acoustically identical from speaker to earphone, and they seem to have the same reception ability too, even though here in the States we can't take advantage of South Korea's advanced LTE network. And you can talk on each one about as long too. In our side-by-side -side testing, the Prime and the stock editions have kept within a few percentage points of one another, despite performing the exact same operations for the same exact time. So, it looks like you don't need to be too concerned about that second battery included with the Prime. You might not need it as often as you'd expect. If you're wondering how that can be, considering the Quad HD display of the LTE A version, we're just as surprised as you. With a much higher pixel density, we expected the Prime's panel to be a real power hog. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It does tend to render cooler whites in some display modes, but the Prime screen can also swing nearly the full range of brightness of the original S5. Even if the resolution bump isn't that noticeable, we'll take it, considering there's no real sacrifice. Maybe we owe some of the unexpected good news here to the Snapdragon 805 in the Prime, a more powerful chip than the 801 in our US version. Qualcomm designed the 805 specifically with 4K displays in mind, and that, plus the new GPU and added RAM, gives the Prime an edge in some, 
but not all, benchmarks. More importantly, the 805 provides a beefier ISP and better video compression, which means it's almost definitely responsible for the quicker camera performance mentioned earlier. Finally, there's Samsung's Download Booster, which uses Wi-Fi and LTE together for faster file downloads. You can actually get this on the stock S5 as well, but US carriers have disabled it for obvious reasons. While we couldn't get the UI to show in the drop-down shade, enabling Download Booster and then downloading a large video usually resulted in the S5 Prime finishing the job much faster. It's a handy little tool if you're a big downloader. While the Prime's special features are pretty cool, let's boil it down to the essentials. What are you getting if you get the newer phone that you don't get with the stock S5? A slightly quicker camera. A sharper display that you probably won't notice unless you watch a lot of ultra high def video. A download booster that you can hack onto the original S5 anyway. A processor that wins in some benchmarks. Network capabilities that probably aren't supported in your country. And some extra accessories in the box that you can find for not much money elsewhere. Are these peripheral benefits worth trading in your Galaxy S5 for a Prime? Does it justify the anguish we're seeing from some? Should you be outraged that Samsung duped you? No. The so-called S5 Prime is a good device. And yes, it is better in some ways than its close sibling, but it's a difference only spec sticklers will notice. If that's you, hey, by all means, pick one up. But if you've already bought the stock S5, there's no need for gnashing of teeth or wringing of handkerchiefs. Everybody, just chill out. If you want one anyway, we get that. Head over to 28 Mobile, linked below, to order your own S5 Prime. Stay tuned for our full review coming later this week, and follow us where we talk, text, and tweet at the links below. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.